Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and it's time for another garden tour. We have some new developments, especially some new flowers that are growing, as well as uh, one vegetable that I'm really, or two vegetables that I'm really excited, well, maybe three, okay. Plenty of vegetables that I'm excited to show you, so uh, let's get going. So this is the picture of the main vegetable and flower part of the front garden. Um, and I just wanted to give you an overall picture because you can see I still have one tomato plant here, but I have taken out the other container plants for the tomatoes because they just were struggling too much. In fact, some of them are sitting over here. The basil at the bottom of them is doing great, but the tomatoes themselves were just, were just struggling too much for, um, you know, me to try to keep feeding them and the disease they were having and all of that. So, so that's the big thing as far as layout goes. As for the alyssum and chamomile bed under my Japanese maple tree, we actually have quite a few flowers coming in for the alyssum. But my biggest excitement is that we have a chamomile plant actually producing chamomile flowers. Finally. Now this is a dwarf chamomile, so they will never get very tall. But um, this plant, um, this is what I ultimately would love to see, is a whole bed of these guys growing under the tree. Um, I will probably still have to plant hostas and stuff in the places that's not enough sun for a plant that needs flowers, sunlight to grow flowers. But I'm really, really excited to see some chamomile. If you recall, my chamomile um, <clears throat> plants in the backyard got eaten by groundhogs. So um, I'm gonna harvest these flowers and take them in and make some chamomile tea tonight and uh, just be so excited about it. <laughs> Over here, the sunflower is kind of coming to their end, and I need to, um, I need to cut the heads off and save the seeds for next year. And this is our, this is my tomato bed. Some of the tomato plants are not doing great, but we do have some tomatoes growing. Let's see, this one did not get blossom and rot. Quite a few over here ended up getting blossom and rot. This is a Cherokee tomato, or this will be a Cherokee tomato once it gets big enough. And we have some more baby zebra tomatoes coming out. These plants have gotten pretty tall. Um, so we have some development. So we still have some tomatoes coming, but it's definitely a lot less than last year. Um, and I just really haven't, like as you can see, I haven't weeded this bed, which I need to do soon. But, um, you know, my biggest success this year has been peppers. And let me take you to see those now. One pepper I'm very excited to see start developing. These are the, these peppers are, um, oh, someone's getting color, yay! These are mostly um, meant for show. I will find the name of them. I think I have a tag down here. I probably pulled it. There it is, poinsettia peppers, poinsettia peppers. Um, so these poinsettia peppers are poinsettia peppers are the kind that stick up. I think that's called a type of bird pepper where it attracts the birds. Um, and they will be colorful. We have, like we have this one already getting color. And it's just a fun looking plant, really. It's just such a pretty showy piece. This is my first time growing this kind of pepper and I'm really looking forward to when we have a bunch of colors here. This bed is doing really well despite being shaded out by the Christmas lima beans. I just harvested a huge, well, a small basket, but a big amount of jalapenos. It looks like our purple bell pepper is starting to grow more of it. And our fish pepper are doing great too. Um, the thing I love about them, besides the variegated leaves themselves, I mean, look how stunning that is, is the peppers themselves have these pretty stripes. Now these pack a little punch. They're about the same heat as a jalapeno, but smaller, of course, um, but they're really good. One interesting thing is these peppers, these banana peppers, are ones I did not um, save seeds from last year. I did not grow banana peppers last year. This plant was one I got from Home Depot as a plant. This banana pepper is not hot from this plant. But that one over there, let me get a little closer, is hot. And you know what? <laughs> My telltale sign is probably the fact that it's sticking up instead of going down because banana peppers usually point down. Uh, and I did not know that and I put it in a stir fry and boy, was I surprised. 
I now have a policy of always tasting the end of a pepper before I cook with it because, uh, you know, cut off a tiny bit or maybe have one of the seeds in my mouth before I cook with it, just so we know what we're cooking. And then over here we have, does anybody remember what this is? This is the Sugar Rush Peach peppers. And these are supposed to be super hot, like habanero strength heat. So I am going to um, take one and do a taste test maybe with my husband. Uh, see if we can do it on camera, but um, I'm not harvesting them just yet even though they look ripe enough because I don't want to accidentally mix them up with my banana peppers over there. Uh, you know, and <laughs> have quite the surprise in the saute. And look here, this pepper, this is the mystery pepper, has gotten so tall, it's taller than me now. <laughs> it's got these two, the peppers growing on it. And then the Jimmy Nardello peppers are doing wonderfully. I need to bring a basket out here, but yesterday I harvested a bunch and I'm gonna harvest some more now. Now when you wait, as I've said before, when you wait till these guys get really red, you get really sweet peppers. And they stay on the vine pretty well once they're red, like they don't spoil too fast. And even if the top starts spoiling, I have noticed that the rest of the pepper stays good for quite a while. So, um, they're really just a great easy pepper to grow. That one's a fun, funky looking shape, isn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna give that one a little more time, let's see here. Now see, this is one that, get my cord off of it. This is one that I should have harvested a while ago. And in fact, because this is so ripe, I'm going to save this for seeds. I'm not actually going to eat this one. I know that the seeds will be fully mature on it. So I'm going to save the seeds from this guy um, for next year. When you're saving seeds, you want to save seeds from the most mature, the best looking plants. Let's see, that one's still got a little green on it. So does that one and that one. Do we have any others? Oh, this one back here. This one back here looks like it needs it. Oh yeah, that's a pretty one. There we go. The Lakota squash, I wanna show you, we do have a squash growing, which is awesome. But also it has vined over here and it is starting to attach itself to, you can see the vine tendrils here, it's attaching itself to my uh, peppers and my um, zinnias. <laughs> Let's see, oh, there's another little pepper I can harvest. I'm trying to keep up with them more now, they're coming faster. But it's kind of a hodgepodge. You have a squash blossom, or in this case, a Lakota squash blossom. You have a zinnia, you have peppers. <laughs> They're all kind of growing together as a happy little family. Another big change that happened since the last time I filmed was I realized I was growing my Lakota squash plant this way. I was vining it this way on this fence and it was just being shaded out. It wasn't getting enough sun to even produce fruit um, going that direction. But I turned it and had it growing this way and you can see it's doing so much better now. This is the first this is the first fruit um, from this plant. We've had a lot of rain the last couple days, um, and I think it's easily, you know, doubled in size in the last week. And it's looking healthy. The vine overall is, is not having too many problems. I have been checking for, um, um, you know, pest and you, pests, um, eggs and using um, duct tape to remove the eggs. I haven't done it probably like a week, but the eggs generally take 10 days to hatch, so you have a little bit of time. Um, but yeah, I'm just so excited about having this uh, fruit develop. This is a winter squash, so this will turn orange and green. And speaking of sun, although this cucumber plant has continued to struggle with blight now from the pests, I took off the bridal tool from this and I have gotten two cucumbers out of it so far, plus this one that looks like it wasn't evenly pollinated. Um, but you know, the first half of it tastes fine. And some of the leaves are looking healthy, like over there. 
Um, so just the fact that it's in the sun has really helped it do better, helped it vine out. And um, I know I have pest issues with it, um, which, you know, could kill it off. But two and a half cucumbers is better than none, isn't it? <laughs> And for my Caserta zucchini, I have this one that's in a small pot. I kind of view this as the one to feed the flowers for the bigger plant for. I'm not viewing this one as much to grow fruit on, but you really, I'm noticing need more than one um, squash of the same variety or similar variety. Um, I think winter squash and summer squash may not be compatible. I had trouble getting the summer squash varieties to grow with the Lakota pollen. So, I use the flowers from this to pollinate and in hopes that a bee will, you know, get the pollen from that and pollinate this. I make sure as I cross through this path that I'm not getting in the way of any big bugs. I kind of, I kind of push on this as I go through. <laughs> and I uncovered this, um, this is the other Caserta zucchini plant I had. Um, where it's just kind of vining around. I've been tying it up and it's been doing pretty good. I did see yesterday several cucumber beetles, which are a big problem here on the plants and they can affect the flowers. But this was the um, baby zucchini. I pollinated with the other um, Caserta zucchini plant uh, yesterday. And I'm hoping against hope that we might get a fruit from this plant this year. I, I really did have to take the tool off of it because I just was having trouble keeping up. It was keeping it very contained and it did keep the pests off of it for a long time. But I, I'm, I'm coming to the realization everybody told me, which is you can only keep the bridal tool on the plants for so long before you have to uncover them to let them get pollinated, to give them space to grow and all that kind of stuff. So this is the container flower bed overall. Uh, it was probably five days ago that I was cutting deadheading off the dead, the uh, spent blooms on the Indian blanket flowers. I'll tell you what, I did not expect these flowers to be so prolific and last so long. And I'm really, really glad I grew them. But the newest addition to the garden and the one I am the most excited about right now is <laughs> these are dwarf asters, dwarf Chinese asters. I, I grew from winter sowing seed um, using, yeah, the winter sowing process. These are a Baker Creek variety. And I'll tell you what, I did not know these things would take so long to bloom. And they are the only light pink. We have the coxcomb that are kind of a corally pink color. But look how much they add a beautiful color to this. And they are just really really stunning flowers just so pretty so i think next year i'm gonna grow i think next year i'm gonna grow a lot of these um and they do get um uh, let's say it's probably two feet tall so it's not too tall uh, could definitely be grown in a container again seems to hold itself up well on its own um so i'm probably gonna harvest one of these flowers and bring them in or, or clip one of these flowers and bring them in and put them in a vase uh, in my study where i work that would be so nice over here we've had quite a few storms and uh, it has caused a lot of things to topple over to fall over including the coxcomb but i just want to show you how beautiful this coxcomb is overall it has really bushed out and it's funny because last year i planted thinking you know have a bumblebee enjoying the flowers. Thank you, Mr. Bee. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because last year I had a flower that ended up coming into the walkway. This coxcomb, until I trimmed it a week ago, was literally taking up like this much of the pathway. <laughs> but they really are pretty. They add a wonderful splash of color um, and just really a unique look. Um, so this is one I grew from saved seeds from last year. And I will be posting some videos soon on how I saved seeds last year, how, how I'm doing the process again and showing you the process for coxcomb and for a few other varieties. Last weekend, my mom came over and we cleared out the weeds back behind here and I moved my rosemary and sage back to this corner. They need water, but not near as much water as other things. So they can be in a place that's not as easily accessible for me. Um, 
and this is <laughs> this was where a tomato plant was it's trying to make another resurgence but I've left the basil here so I can have basil still because I was growing them together but what I'm excited to show you is down here we have butterfly weed growing and I had planted the butterfly weed um, they grew it from seed and I am so excited to see them flowering hopefully they'll come back next year and be bigger and taller because they're probably only I mean they've fallen over but they're probably only like four inches off the ground but butterfly weed is an essential thing for butterflies it's a great perennial in the area and I believe it's native so I'm very very thrilled to see them flowering because that means to me that I will see them again next year my edamame flowers are my edamame plants are doing really well uh, I saw flowers on them recently so hopefully we will have some pods that could be pods there or more growth there soon oh look it's a baby edamame pod oh my goodness it's so cute if you don't know what edamame is it's uh, basically soybeans but it's called edamame when they grow bigger you can shell them or you can steam them or boil them quickly in water and eat and pop the the uh, soybeans out of them and eat them I still haven't properly staked up the um, broccoli that I planted here, but we had 95 degrees the other day, and the fact that it didn't bolt, I think can be attributed to the fact that it's partly being shaded by the other vegetable plants. Um, that also means it's growing slower, but I'm okay with that if it keeps it from bolting for now, <laughs> because it'll probably take off once it gets cold enough and the other plants die back. Drying off? What are you doing? Cabbage plants are doing really well. Um, these are Charmant varieties, so they can be planted closer together, although I wouldn't recommend this close. This is kind of a, I stuck them at the last minute in a container because I had to move the plants from over where I had had them before when we had to do the um, termite treatment to the foundation of the house. But look how beautiful this head is getting. I mean, I think it's getting pretty close. They, these, these do not get huge, and probably because they're planted so close together, we are probably not going to get huge heads out of them. But all of them are forming heads now. And I kept this covered in bridal tool for quite a bit. Um, and then I remembered that cabbage, really, while their leaves can really suffer, the heads the, you know, the, the cabbage um, worms don't really get into the heads of the cabbage that much because they're pretty tightly wound. So once they were starting to develop real heads, I felt safe uncovering them. And before we go to the side yard and backyard, the last development in this garden is really what has happened with these herbs that I planted probably two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I did a video. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago. I, I did a video. Um, on kind of prepping for the fall garden, how to squeeze it into your beds. And I planted a whole bunch of dill and you can see cilantro that is a slow bolt cilantro, meaning it won't go to seed quite as fast in the heat. Often cilantro can't handle high heat and it will go to seed to try to save itself. Um, and so they're doing really well. I'm going to have to thin out the dill, but I'm really looking forward to being able to freeze some fresh herbs at the end of the summer to be able to have for next year or to be able to have for the winter. One other flower that has really gotten going now, and I knew this would be the end of the year, unlike the asters, which I didn't know would take so long to get going, but this is globe amaranth. You can see there's a butterfly on it. I tend to wait until late summer, early fall to bloom, but they really are a beautiful, and let me tell you this, not only do the pollinators love these guys, but look how stunning they are. As individual flowers and I really love having cutting off a long stem and putting it in with zinnias and adding just sort of some accents of color especially since I got one that was this dark purple I don't think last year the varieties I grew had a dark purple one in it so um, really excited to see this doing well in the garden now the sunflower in the backyard has definitely lost its beauty but I'm trying to give it enough time for the seeds to mature, I still see some green. How do you all know? I know the back of the head is supposed to look different and I can kind of see, I can kind of see the color on the back of the head is lighter than it was before. Um, but I'm probably gonna give it another week, partly because I just don't feel like dealing with the seeds right now. 
in the backyard. I'm just kind of letting the beds go as they want. And next year I'm going to do more with the backyard for sure. Um, I need to trim these grapevines. It just spreads so fast on the fence. Admittedly, I have not been good about keeping up with them either. But I just wanted to show you real quick. I actually think that the nasturtiums are a real blessing. You know, these were something that reseeded themselves from last year, the nasturtiums. They are edible. I don't really eat them because I'm not a huge fan of their flavor. You can, you know, I've heard the flowers aren't quite as strong in flavor, but I mean, isn't, aren't they just such pretty flowers? So when I look out my window, even though I've kind of neglected my beds in the back, I get to see some pretty yellow flowers. And this over there is um, wood sorrel. Those little clover-like looking plants, those are edible. The way you know it's not clover, you can tell the leaf, the leaf is sort of heart-shaped there. It has kind of a um, lemony flavor to it. Make sure there's no bugs on it before I eat some. Mm-hmm. It tastes very lettucey, grassy, earthy, but with a, a lemon flavor to it. They are edible, they're tasty. If they grow in your garden in a place that they're not sprayed or peed on, sprayed by dogs <laughs> or other animals, you can eat it. You can put it in your salads. I don't really use it as much as I'd like, but I really do love knowing the things that grow in your area that are edible, that'll, you know, be beneficial. And we have bees pollinating. Yay! Our uh, raspberry plants. It's the first time I've seen bees on them. There's tons. There's some down there too. Uh, these are two raspberry plants here that are starting to set fruit again. Ooh, I need to get back there. There's some fruit up in that. Ooh, that's calling my name. But the raspberries, I probably get like a handful a day. But there is plenty of fruit setting that um, I'll probably get quite a bit through the beginning of fall. This is the second year growing these raspberry plants. They're two different varieties. Um, they're both supposed to produce in the fall. And I think this one has so far done both spring and fall um, for me. Next year, I'm going to have to trellis them up more. And you can see there's some weeds in the back that have just kind of gotten away from me. So this is going to need some work next year. But raspberries are definitely one of my favorite fruit to eat. And so I'm very thrilled to have this growing in my yard, um, you know, pretty much without me having to do any special assistance, although they'd probably do better <laughs> if I did help them out more. We're also to the time of the year where my Rose of Sharon, this is where there was a tree here that had been cut back um, because it was just not healthy. Um, but the Rose of Sharon, not native to the area, not particularly um, uh, the best thing to grow for native species and stuff, but they are a really pretty hibiscus flower. And um, they will grow, they will regrow. You can cut them back, they'll come back. I mean, this plant has been cut back twice, once for the fence being built and once because of the tree. And uh, it has made a resurgence every time. I have some over there as well, you can see that are also blooming. So it's really nice. Our bedroom window looks out on this area and if, if I have my shades up, I can see the flowers, which um, I really enjoy seeing. I haven't talked about the compost bin for a long time. This is how it looks at the moment. Um, those stalks are from the tops of the garlic that I had cured. I just finally cut them off. Um, and I have been bad this year. I have not flipped it once. Um, so at the end of the season, I will do a look and see how it completely untouched just layering things on, throwing things as they get done, uh, bed has done. Let's see. In a few months, I'll be doing a check-in to see if I got any good compost over it or if, you know, my laissez-faire behavior uh, ended up not having any great results. <laughs> my blackberry plants look so much better after my mom trimmed all the dead growth back. And look, after she trimmed it, we have some fresh growth happening. So that'd be great. If you all have recommendations on the best ways to care for blackberries, uh, these are mostly thornless, so I could possibly grow them in the backyard. Um, I really just need to give them a permanent home instead of here because they don't get enough sun here to really thrive. They're just kind of hanging out. So um, do you think they'd do well in the backyard, like over near where the raspberries are, maybe further down the fence? Um, any suggestions you have would be welcome. 
That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.